We intend this book as an introduction to aliens and hybrids. We will talk about the friendly aliens visiting the Earth and helping the humanity. We'll talk about uh, the hybrid children, star seeds, crystal children, and indigo children. Although the subject is complex, we'll try to keep it simple. And although it's, there is some drama, there is much drama in the topic, we intend to keep it happy and positive. This book is the result of the research we have done, mostly in the latest seven years. And um, the information is up to date as, um, as the end of 2016. And the information is up to date as we write it at the end of 2016. We think that visitation of the aliens and the appearance of the hybrid children is the most important thing that happens to the humanity. And we have great hopes for the future of the humanity as it discovers the aliens and is transformed in the process. The information about the aliens comes from... Uh, uh, the first source of the information about the aliens are the experiencers, the humans that um, met the aliens face to face, spoke to them, uh, visited their ships and their worlds. Another source of the information are channelings. In a channeling session, a channeler gets into a trance state and connects to an alien and uh, transmits the information, the questions and the answers from the alien and to the alien. This allows us to speak to the aliens um, and ask them questions and get their answers. Some of us are channelers and we include many channeling transcripts in these books. In this book. Most of the aliens that visit the earth and deal with human and interact with humans are, are other dimensional. That means that they exist in a different reality and are invisible to us. Yet they have the technologies to materialize in our reality and be visible and uh, be material. Many of them are um, can exist in our, on our planet for a few hours, but then they have to come back to, the, uh, to return to their, uh, to their dimension. They also can take humans to their ships and to their worlds. Um, many experiences have visited their worlds. The, the world where from the aliens come is usually called fourth density or fourth dimension or fifth dimension. It is the same, the same dimension, but the numbering system is different, so some call it fourth and some call it fifth dimension. The aliens that speak to us call it fourth dimension, so we'll stick to that numbering system. The experiencers, the experiencers that visit their dimension uh, mention that they feel wonderful on their ships, their sicknesses go away, they feel healthy, and they can spend their mm, up to about two weeks, but then they have to come home to return to our dimension. That, that is to keep them healthy in this, in this dimension. The life in the fourth dimension is a bit different from ours. The main quality which is essential there is telepathy. Most of the beings in the fourth dimensions, dimension are telepathic. Most of them have psychic abilities and many of them have telekinetic abilities. Psychic abilities mean that they can take, talk to spirits and telekinetic means that they, they can manipulate uh, matter with their consciousness. The whole feeling of the fourth dimension is lighter. Even the time in the fourth dimension is more flexible. Um, the beings of the fourth dimension have natural ability to shift in time back and forth uh, about a few hours back and forth. In our dimension we walk time from the beginning forward and in the fourth dimension there is an ability to shift at using uh, shift uh, your consciousness back and forth in time so you, you kind of can navigate time. time.
Small chapter, Ascension. Ascension is a process of shifting to a higher dimension. This is a way how many civilizations in the universe shifted from third dimension to the fourth dimension. The humanity started the ascension as well. We are shifting to a higher dimension. Currently our ascension is at early stages. Currently only a few people shift daily and those are mostly from Aboriginal cultures. The peak of ascension is expected to be about 170 years from now. More precisely, 180 years from now. That would be roughly around 20, uh, year 2300. So it would take about five generations to, um, to reach the peak of ascension. Currently, the fourth dimension, four dimensional Earth is sparsely populated. Its whole population is about a million people, of which the majority are the aliens, Pleiadians and Yael. There are some reptilians and a few draconians, and some of the ascended humans from third dimension. Not all the people will ascend. Ascension is a conscious process. A person has to want to ascend, and people will ascend individually and in families and in groups. The main requirement for ascension are the desire to ascend and certain spiritual purity, um, which can be prepared by meditations and positive intentions. It is predicted that less than 50% of human population will ascend. The remaining people will um, remain in uh, third dimensional on the third dimensional earth the ascension process takes about a week on this side on the third dimensional side and some time of accommodation on the fourth dimensional side here the person goes into ascension by themselves on the other side there is a lot of assistance to get accommodated children and pets ascend together with their parents Physiologically, the ascension involves the activation of the nervous system, the energetics of the body, like similar to Kundalini awakening, and activation of the DNA. Currently ascending at slow rate are the people of Aboriginal cultures who reach the spiritual maturity and the very tiny percentage of uh, Westerners who are in a positive state of mind in a positive state of mind and who consciously work on ascension. The current rate of ascension is very small, a few hundred year, uh, people per year of which the majority are not Westerners. Currently, the majority of the ascended people uh, are accommodated in the existing alien culture of the four dimension Earth. As the rate of ascension becomes high, then uh, the newly ascended people will develop their own, our own culture. It is not the first ascension on Earth. The Earth has been, has been four dimensional before and um, it was the downfall of Atlantis that, the call, that caused dissension of uh, the human population and the destruction of human population and the dissension of human population from fourth dimension to the third dimension and the last uh, wave of destruction happened about 23,000 years ago. The advantage of four dimensional of the four dimensional life is richness of spiritual life. It is much more collective, there is much better collective communication. It is much lighter and happier. And the levels of the lessons are much higher. It is much higher much more higher vibrational lessons and uh, 
more pleasant, more happy in many, many uh, ways. Of course, there is, uh, there is drama in the fourth dimension as well, and there are challenges and lessons, but these are lessons of higher level. It is like graduation from uh, middle school to high school or from kindergarten to school. Uh, the lessons become much more complex and more interesting. The idea of ascension is central to our culture. The idea of downfall is central to our culture as well. And the ascension was predicted by many prophets. It is the central idea for many current channelings and many current teachings. Much work is needed from us to prepare for ascension. And also much work is done by our higher dimensional friends, four dimensional and higher dimensional friends to help the ascension. It is a process which is guided by, by the creator. Uh, in the computer analogy, the ascension is a major upgrade of the operation system. And in gaming analogy, it is that the shift, the upgrade to a higher level with the new rules of game. Currently, not all humans would like to ascend. Many humans are still stuck in the ideas of the third, of the third uh, dimension and uh, are happy with the four dimensional tasks. To pre uh, so many humans are stuck in the, third, in the third dimensional drama. To prepare for ascensions, for ascension, many. Uh, People on Earth, people on Earth have to understand it and make the decision to ascend. As humans uh, ascend, uh, they disappear from this third dimensional Earth. So during the week of preparation for ascension, pre the, uh, a human uh, uh, has to meditate, desire to ascend, and um, go through a conscious process of transforming, transmuting uh, his, his, uh, their own body. And the end of this process, the body shifts to a fourth dimension and disappears from here. So this is a big decision to leave this reality and uh, shift to a new reality. So much education is needed, much research has to be done. And we have great help from higher dimensions. Currently, we have it through channelers, but also we will have the opportunity to have the visitors from higher dimension who will uh, speak to us directly and pop up in our dimension. The shift from higher dimension to here is technological and temporary. Only a few higher dimensional beings choose to come here and live for a longer time. Usually, they visit only. Uh, for a short period of time. The key step um, in the collective preparation for the ascension is the open contact with the aliens. The end of small chapter, the beginning of the next chapter, open contact. Uh, the contact with the aliens happens daily on Earth, but it is uh, usually done through channelers, not face to face. And sometimes it is happening face to face, but this contact has not reached the public um, public consciousness. We are getting closer to the public realizing um, that the contact is possible, and um, that uh, and basically inviting the, uh, to invite the aliens to speak to us. They are close and available for speaking to us. But they are waiting for the official uh, invitation to come and uh, visit and speak to us openly. The channel communication with the aliens predict that the open contact will happen soon, uh, most likely within 10 years before the year 2027. It is determined by the collective awareness and by the collective desire of the people of the planet. Currently, uh, we are represented by the politicians who are very scared of the idea of the open con. 
the governments of the earth are aware of the aliens and have regular meetings with them but they are afraid of disclosing that to the public because they are afraid to lose the control over the public if the public learns about the aliens and their technologies they would not be willing to support the ideas of of the war and military dominance and uh, development of new weapons. And this would undermine the current distribution of power. Nonetheless, the ascension is, has already started and it is absolutely essential for the Earth to become aware, for the population to become aware of ascension. And meeting the aliens face to face would greatly help uh, that education. This is why we and many other light workers call for the disclosure and open contact. We propose that the secrets about the aliens are disclosed by the governments and that the governments and, our, and other pre representatives of us invite the aliens to visit us physically down on earth. We openly invite here the aliens to visit us and continue the conversations face to face. Until that happens we um, communicate with the aliens through channelings, through psychic and telepathic abilities. We visit them astrally and share the experiences of visitations. Some of us visit the aliens physically and bring back the memories of the visitations. Next chapter, the Lirans. The first humans that appeared in this galaxy were the Lirans. Until then, the galaxy was populated by reptilians. These reptilians had two legs, two hands, a head. They were a big tail and they were walking straight. They had um, the fly ships, the spaceships, and weapons. The Lirans came from outside of this galaxy and uh, sell, sell, settled around the star called Lyra. They developed a civilization, but their planet was destroyed by the reptilians. Uh, many Lirans escaped and were scattered around the galaxy, and this um, gave rise to the humans in this galaxy. The Lirans have cherished their ancient culture and language. They're about nine feet tall, they're four-dimensional, and they're feline humans. They look like lions in a tall humanized body. They're very strong, proud, and kind. They are friends of humans on Earth and are our ancestors. Many Lyrans are incarnated as Earth humans, and some Earth humans carry ancient uh, Lyran bloodlines. The presence of Lyran DNA gives the human the strength, the emotional power, and the telepathic and psychic abilities. The Lyrans are also mammals and uh, give live birth to their children and um, feed the children with milk. The breasts of Lyrans are much smaller than humans and disappear after the milking ends. The face of Lyrans is covered with hair. The women, Lyran women have a beard covering the face like lions and um, all of them have low voice. The females have lower voice than males. The Lyrans don't find humans to be sexually attractive and vice versa. The humans wouldn't find the Lyrans to be sexually attractive. We are now quite different. But otherwise the Lyrans, the Lyrans and the humans can become friends and not to be afraid of each other. Uh, the Lyrans and humans can easily hug, but before you hug a Lyran, ask them to be very gentle and not to hug you too tight. They're very strong. 
the Lyrans are very spiritually advanced. They can see some of the future. They can uh, naturally do uh, some of some of time travel, and um, and they have healing abilities. To some humans, Lyrans serve as spiritual teachers and gurus. Some Lyrans serve as spirit guides and higher selves to Earth humans. The Lyrans have a great respect for feelings, emotions, and spiritual integrity. They are wise and serve the progress of mankind across the universe.